Hey there, I'm Julie Bethan Balzer, a painter, a printmaker, and a collage artist living and working outside of Boston, and welcome to my art studio. So this week, I want to talk about one aspect of my art practice, which is economy. And I'm not really talking about like economy, like money, like being cheap, but uh, economy of effort, economy of movement. So I have an everyday art practice. And one of the things that I need to do to make that sustainable is to do things that uh, minimize how much effort I need to make every day or sort of get more bang for my buck, I think is another good way of putting it. It's kind of like um, if you think about runners or athletes and they'll talk about, you know, do your arms sort of moving a certain way help you or hurt you? Can you do things to just make uh, your endurance grow. So this is a little bit more about art endurance, but I'm gonna show you just one little thing that I do that makes a huge difference in making my daily art practice easier. So let's do it. So in this video, you can see a whole lot of stuff happening basically like off camera. So the question is, what is happening off camera exactly? And then I seem to come back into the camera and I'm just stamping uh, and it's, you know, perfectly clean and easy. And here you go. I'm, you know, drying up and stamping and like, what am I doing off camera? So I thought I'd show you a little bit about my workflow, what I'm actually doing, how I'm making collage papers while I'm actually making a finished piece of art so that you can get a sense of the magic that's happening off camera. Okay, so normally what I do is I have the paper that I'm working on for my project in the camera. So we're gonna pretend that that's over there. Then off to the side, I have my gelatin plate, a brayer. I am using some foam stamps that I designed for art foamies. And I usually have scrap paper, deli paper is my favorite to use, and that's kind of like the basic setup. So then I use my gelatin plate as a paint palette. So it could be that I'm putting out one color, or it could be that I'm mixing a couple colors to make a custom color. It can be whatever you want it to be. I usually put out way more paint than I would if I were gelatin printing because again, I'm creating a paint pad on a gelatin print so I don't need the layer of paint to be super thin. So then I'll roll out the paint and if I'm mixing the colors, I'll mix them, you know, whatever it is I wanna do. And again, I'm not trying to get a thin layer that goes all the way to the edges. I'm just trying to get enough paint for my big stamp. Then onto the jelly paper or whatever paper you have, I clean my brayer. So I'm already now creating collage paper just by rolling the brayer out. And I've cleaned my brayer, so two wins. Then I can ink my stamp up by pressing it into the paint. And you can see you got quite good coverage on there doing it. And you know, if you're at all worried, like by all means, keep going into the paint but that's why I like a nice thick layer because I'm just trying to use it like a paint pad as opposed to an ink pad. Then I'm gonna print onto my paper, which is here, which would normally be in the camera. So I'll just print this. And for the sake of you getting to see what's happening, I'll bring it in, but you get the idea that it would normally be elsewhere. And there's my nice, beautiful print. You can see how that blue paint is in some places, which is exactly the look I like. And I can again, like ink up. I say ink up, but it's paint up. I'm using paint acrylic paint and paint up my stamp and then I'm going to protect my table underneath because I'm going to stamp off the edge here so I'm gonna put a little bit of jelly paper underneath and again you know this is how I'm able to just make collage paper that's very interesting without ever having to sit down to make collage paper because I'm cleaning off my brush and cleaning off my brayer I'm using it to mask now like in here where I feel like maybe I haven't gotten enough uh, paint on it sometimes that's because the paint is kind of clumping so sometimes I'll just roll out a little bit to make sure that the paint is still you know, smoothly applied and hasn't been worn away by the stamp. Now I can clean this off onto the deli paper or again, economy of movement. I can apply it directly to the stamp or I can do a combination 
of both. So now I'm gonna, so hard to keep everything in the camera. That's one of the reasons I do it off the camera, not because I'm trying to, um, you know, hide anything, but just because it's a really ugly video if you actually see how much stuff is spread out everywhere. Okay, so then again, I can ink this as needed and I can stamp. It's always amazing to me. These phone stamps are so big and chunky, but they still give such a nice, delicate line, which is cool to say. And I think I'll add a little more blue paint so for some more color variation. So I just add it directly on top of the paint that's already there. This is, again, about economy of movement and energy. I don't want to work too hard. So now it's mixing with the paint that's there, and I can brayer off and the excess paint that I have onto either piece of deli paper that I have here or a brand new piece or it could be copy paper or whatever it is that you like to use so I'm just going to continue getting some paint and then stamp it and when the deli paper gets too wet or anything like that there's always more there's always more deli paper so now this piece is done, right? I've printed my beautiful paper, but I can now clean off the stamp just by stamping onto this paper. I can clean my brayer similarly by brayering out. So for me, this stamp is clean as long as I can press it to a piece of paper and it doesn't leave anything behind. If you want to more aggressively clean it, you can certainly take it to the sink. You can take a baby wipe. You can clean it lots of different ways. I personally, um, it'll make me not want to use the foam stamps if I have to spend a lot of time cleaning them. So I usually just stamp them off and then keep using them. As for this, this is wonderful. Now I can pull a print from this. And it's one of the reasons I like to use it instead of palette paper, because now my gelatin plate is giving me even more use out of this paint. Like none of it is going to be wasted whatsoever. Now, one of the things that's important to know is the way that I make my collage paper is I just keep, you can see, I just keep filling this paper until it's totally filled. And then I can either put something pretty on it or I can leave it in the kind of way that it is now with lots of, you know, brush clean off strokes and random clean up bits from the jelly plate. So I, you know, mostly just made a lot of enhanced collage paper here, let's say. Lots of enhanced collage paper. And then this is like the quote unquote pretty print. That's kind of the done one, but I've now made all this collage paper or at least started on it or continued it and I'll sort of keep going. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, do subscribe to my channel. You can sign up for my free Friday newsletter at juliebalzer.com. And of course you can buy some art from my website also at juliebalzer.com or take an online class.